Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, July 29th, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. A three-day geomagnetic storm is forecast to begin right now. Tonight's aurora forecast on the left, we could expect KP7, which would be G3 geomagnetic storm, and that will remain a G1 geomagnetic storm for all of tomorrow. Keep calm. It's boom time. The massive park fire marches into the history books as the sixth largest fire in California history. As of today, 370,000 acres burned with 12% containment. So, good news. There's some... Containment there, bad news. It is the sixth largest wildfire in California history. And a new wildfire to talk about, the Alexander Mountain Fire exploded today from nothing. Prompts evacuations in Colorado's Larimer County. This is just 20 miles want to get right from to Loveland, breaking news Colorado. For you. This view from our copter showing you why a large plume of smoke coming out of the foothills in Larimer County. We have been talking about and covering for you the Alexander Mountain wildfire burning tonight with no containment so far. We have seen the help from the air when it comes to battling this fire, <clears throat> excuse me, including air tankers, helicopters, all so very important as crews work to protect nearby homes and businesses. Mandatory evacuations in place due to the Alexander Wild Mountain wildfire. Voluntary evac orders have been issued for some other neighborhoods. This fire last estimated to be at around 339 acres. So far, no reports of any homes being lost or any injuries with this. Thankfully, that fire located along Highway 34 between Drake and Loveland. The highway there has been closed. So the road has been closed, which is good news, but bad news. There is a fire near Loveland currently at 339 acres in size and will be growing. As you can see, they said that there is zero containment. So we'll keep you up to date on the newest updates. Some insanely garbage uh, reporting coming out. Erratic changes in rainfall now being linked to humans. I mean, everything. Climate change causes everything. But now, erratic changes in rainfall. Do you remember 10 years ago when they said it would never rain in California and now all the reservoirs are full? Do you think they actually have any idea what they're talking about? I, I don't. What say you? Leave a comment below. Science, scientists are saying that a global increase in fluctuations in rainfall is the result of increased atmospheric moisture from greenhouse gas emissions. CO2 is not moisture. Moisture is H2O. So the subtitle alone makes this uh, a shardicle. Here's the hail map for Sunday, July 28th. 5,858 households impacted by hail, one inch or larger. 188 households impacted by gorilla hail. The big winter chicken dinner was South Dakota, the Pine Ridge Reservation. Here is the full forecast. Strong to severe thunderstorms in the Midwest, Northern Plains, and Ohio Valley. Hot weather in the Central Plains. Scattered strong to severe thunderstorms are possible in portions of the Midwest and the Northern Plains today. Heavy to excessive rainfall may bring flooding to the Ohio Valley and Central Appalachians today. Hot to excessive hot temperatures, what does that mean, are expected over the Central Plains much of the week and heat advisories and excessive heat warnings have been issued. Could be 100 degrees or hotter in the Central area for several days, which is normal for many, most summers. And so here we can see on the thermodynamic map here with the temperature shaded that uh, take a look at that. Kansas could reach 106, 107 tomorrow. And so this hot hole is going to continue in that central portion here through Thursday into Friday, Saturday, and start to cool off on Sunday, which is good news. What's interesting is as we move the thermodynamics model into mid-August, Look at how cold it gets over the United States. Yeah, the entire Midwest here in the 70s for highs. Look at this. Crazy, 
Crazy making indeed. So we could be seeing some really interesting erratic weather coming through uh, in August. So let's take a quick look at the actual weather patterns here on the GFS and see if we have any severe weather threats. Small amount over the next nine hours uh, by morning could be exploding over Indiana there in Ohio. Um, and here's Tuesday and Wednesday into Thursday. So it's going to be a wet and rainy pattern for the East Coast. The coast with the most. Earthquake shakes LA with epicenter near Barstow. It came in uh, at 4.9 and there have been aftershocks as we can see that initial quake. We'll just blow up the map here. Southern California, Barstow, California, 4.9, 22 kilometers east, northeast of Barstow at a very shallow depth of 7.3. Another quake rumbling in Brian Head at 4.5 makes for an interesting pack of moderate earthquakes for the west. The largest quake of the last 24 hours coming from Tonga at 6 magnitude, a surface quake there. Very low level for that region. I'm sure not a lot of people affected. And we do have a 2.8 in Ormston, Canada. A very strange earthquake indeed. As we quick take a look at Worldwide Volcano News, Kotla Volcano, we talked about the Joculups yesterday, which is that glacial outburst flood. Well, seismic activity, seismic uptick continues today. The most activity we've seen in the uptick the entire time. So there could be a big eruption emanating from Kotla, VEI 3 or greater. Worldwide volcano news for the rest of the day. We have huge volcanic explosions from Sakodajima today, over 11,000 foot. Raventador puffing as well. Sangay to 21,000 feet. I do have some photos of that Sakodajima boom. Popo puffing to 19,000 foot today. Fuego to 17. Sabankaya, 24,000 foot puff. Ibu, 10,000 foot puff. Here is... Uh, the picture in question, Sakodajima, powerful Vulcanian explosions continue. And they are spectacular. Sakodajima, 18,000 foot puff. And what else do we got? Sangay, 21,000 foot, Ducono to seven, Semadu to 15. And Raventador wraps up the list for the day, 14,000 foot puff. Actually, that's on the 30th. Aurora alert. Strong geomagnetic storm could spark northern lights at mid-latitudes across Europe and the U.S. Yeah, let's take a look at that aurora forecast. There we are. Tonight's aurora forecast on the left and tomorrow night's on the right. Currently, take a look at this. Boulder Station, 12 hours ago, went to KP9 for nine hours. have no idea what's going on there. But we did just get a jump up in telemetry here. So the geomagnetic storm has arrived and will probably pop up a little higher than this. Because based on the telemetry here, what I'm seeing is a barely a pop up to KP3. Maybe KP4 with this type of activity. So the WSA Enlil Spiral has been updated today to show multiple cannibalized CMEs. Look at that. One, two. It's actually one, two, three, four. Four, five, keeping it alive. Six. Oh, so and and so we'll have multiple phases of uptick in this geomagnetic storm as it hits. So it's going to be a spectacular twenty-four hours, forty-eight hours for space weather enthusiasts that are watching the sun. We've got a lot coming in, and here is that forecast through the end of July. Holy macaroni! Take a quick look at Soho and I'll show you just what happened over the last 48 hours. Multiple halo coronal mass ejections. That means it's headed directly towards us. Boom, there's one. Boom, there's another. So the sun has gone wild. And the models, well, they look fantastic. If even half of this lines up, we could be seeing a pretty significant geomagnetic storm in the next three to six hours. So I will link the Discover Solar Wind below. This is what you want to keep an eye on. When plasma speed here in purple pops up above 500, we will probably be in geomagnetic storm. So buckle up. It's coming. This is a hilarious article. Is planting trees the solution to the CO2 problem? Did they just get the memo? 
because for decades, they've been poo-pooing the idea that all we need to do is plant trees. They claimed it was too expensive, but a group of greenies re-looked at the idea and they found that carbon sequestration using trees is a lot more economical than $15 billion plants that only suck CO2 out of one little area. It's getting kind of scary, isn't it? When you're in a time of need, will you be prepared? Did you ever hear of the Jace case? All your emergency medical medications in one case. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Medications to help against pneumonia, travelers, diarrhea, Lyme disease, bacterial vaginosis, and more, including ivermectin and albuterol and anything else that you can possibly want to put in here. Yeah, you can get a whole year's supply of your diabetes medications to have in case of a grid down scenario or some other catastrophe where you can't get to the doctor and it's literally essential for you to have these medications for life. Wouldn't you like to have peace of mind? Grab a Jace case. You can customize it. You don't need to use your doctor. It happens all in a very short period of time. You use our doctors and they allow you to have your own emergency medical kit with anything you want in it at a reasonable price. And it also supports our channel. So go get it. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video. We are shadow banned. Tonight, I'll be on Bear Watch again for 24 hours. We got more new non-lethal rounds from CPW. And so I've got a plan. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to go out and implement it. Wish me luck. Hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do and watch all of our podcasts in one place commercial free. Be safe. We love you and we'll see you all at the Crestone Energy Fair September 14th and 15th. Mm -hmm.